Bluefin tuna fishing at night has been remarkable in Southern California, as evidenced by the deck of the Pacific. But last night on the Oceanside 95, Marcelo Lopez dropped down a knife jig and he hooked something really big. It turns out to be a 300-pound swordfish. At least that's the estimate on how much this beast weighs. Known for being hard fighting, he subdued this magnificent creature in about five minutes. Great stuff going on in Southern California. What it is, it's using these quick clips here. The one from Spro, but there's lots of different brands out there and, and, and this is the one I was using and I felt like it worked really good. You don't always have the room or the time to be cutting off and retying and, and, uh, and re, you know, when you're gonna try different lures. And as you can see, that, that quick clip there is tied on and then the jig is already clipped on there. So now when I wanna go and change the lure, you kind of pry it out, it comes off. You get your next lure, and if you can kind of see the way that this little clip goes in, you're just going to put that in between there, and you're good to go. That quickly, you got a new jig on. This system right here really helped me out a lot. It helped me go from a surface iron to a yo-yo iron uh, really quickly or change colors or something like that. If, I, if maybe it started getting windy, I went to like a 7X, or maybe the wind backed off, I would go to a lighter jig, things like that. It allowed me to really be versatile on the, on a boat there where it, you know retying wasn't always comfortable. Hey, good morning, my dear friends, and welcome to beautiful Surfside, California, on an absolutely summer-like gorgeous day. It is sunny and warm already here this morning. The ocean looks pretty calm here. However, there's some weather up, and we're going to get into that with you very, very soon. You saw that swordfish that was taken on, side, on board the Oceanside 95. That's some pretty good stuff. Boys got a little bit carried away on their estimate. It just weighed in at 178 pounds, but that's a remarkable catch. And our bluefin tuna fishing is still really, really good. But as I said, that weather is getting in the way. A big flow of more yellowfin and dorado headed our way, and so much more, you know. What time it is, it's time for the morning briefing. Good morning, my friends. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, is that good coffee this morning. And it is so great to be back with you all again. Make sure you hit that like button, share these videos with a friend, subscribe to the Friedman Adventures channel. And also don't forget to tick that little bell. You'll be notified when there is new content. And don't forget, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We are there 24-7 for you. Also, last night, we were with Sam De La Torre, another great edition of Tackle Shop Confessions. It's archived now. You can go back and watch that. I highly recommend you do it. The El Patron has a day and a half trip this weekend out of 22nd Street Landing in beautiful San Pedro, California. Man, the El Patron, speedy, great crew, lots of fun. It should be a great trip. 310-832-8304. Don't forget, you can join us on our October 20th trip on board the Independence. Five days on a gorgeous boat with great food and some of the best fishing we've seen all year long. We're pointed right toward it. Go to independentsportfishing.com. Sign up for the Friedman Adventures five-day trip. I'll be there. We sail October the 20th. Well, it is truly great to be with you all, and we do have so much to cover with you. A reminder that Wednesday night live, Freeman Adventures has a great lobster hooping seminar for you with Steve Oropesa and Gil Hernandez from Promar. That's going to be a great one. Tune in at 6, watch the seminar. At the end of the seminar, you can ask questions all night long. I'll keep Steve and Gil there for the entire night if I have to. After midnight, we'll make them stay. So that will be Wednesday night. All right, let's talk about the 600,000 elephant in the room, at least for today, and that's the weather out where we have been catching the majority of our bluefin tuna, where it has been absolutely off the hook. Some of the best fishing of the year, probably the best, because not only is it wide open, but the quality of the fish, with fish up there around 200 pounds, sometimes a tick under 300 pounds, it's been truly remarkable fishing at night. Last night was a tough night. For many, some guys got in on some decent fishing. I talked to the Royal Star, and they said, we're not even going to do it. It's way too windy and rough. We're not even going to fish this stuff. So right now, out there around Tanner, Cortez, and Clemente Island, it is still blowing. It's going to be nasty throughout the day. 
Some guys may get something accomplished, but it's a tough one. Really, really tough one with some gusts out there to 25 knots. And that's just no fun and really hard to fish. And now that weather will start to moderate and become better by tomorrow. Breezy through the weekend, I want to say, in those areas, but better, much better. Fishable for sure. And then as we move you into next week, man, that looks like it's going to be outstanding weather. After Monday, it's going to be really beautiful. So weather is something that we have to factor in right now. We wanted to bring that to you right away. All right, south of the border, way down there around Turtle Bay, Bahia Tortuga. Our friend Brad Phillips yesterday reminded us, I just want to remind you all, that there is so much yellowfin and skipjack and dorado that he's able to catch those species fishing from the beach. There is so much fish, and it's all pointed in this direction. We have to hope our oceanography remains warm. That's what those fish want. If it does, they should continue their trek up here into Gringolandia and be able to be within range of all of us. I still think we're looking down the barrel of an incredible late summer, beautiful fall, and perhaps right on in to the winter time. I think that is a real possibility, and it just seems to be playing out. This little blip in the radar, if we have a blip today on the bluefin, is due to this weather. It's windy. Once that subsides, we're going to get back in to catching those fish at night. You don't want to fish anything less than 100 pounds. I prefer 130 spectra. I don't want to see you with anything less than 200 pound liters. And in this kind of windy weather, 400 gram jigs are what you want to be fishing with. It's been three to 400 right now. You're going to have to air toward that, and that will go for the next several days. Make sure you have that. And the meter line is so very important. You need to know the depth that your jig is at because the captain is going to say drop. First of all, you got to drop fast. And then secondly, he's going to give you the depth, 400 feet, 200 feet, whatever. And you've got to know where your jig is. And if it's scoped out, if your jig is out, then whatever your meter line is telling you, it changes color every 100 feet, that's not the right depth. You want to have that straight up and down if you can by casting up wind or whatever it is you have to do. But remember, talk to a crew member. That is really going to be the best way to make it happen. There has been some remarkable catches. Yesterday, the Amigo out of 22nd Street Landing said, you know, it was one of Damien's charters, and he said, let's go for this, man. And they went, and they ended up with 20 nice bluefin tuna. Damien got one. I haven't heard the weight on it, but it looked like it was up there close to 200 pounds. Beautiful fish that they hooked off the bow of the Amigo. Great going on that one. And that just illustrates that you can catch fish from San Diego up to the Channel Islands. All of this zone where the tuna is presently residing is within range of all those landings if you're on a day and a half trip or better. Some really remarkable fishing previous to this wind. I think we're gonna have a little blip in our fishing and then it's gonna come roaring back and especially next week looking really good. And this weekend, the weather's gonna be breezy but definitely fishable. There's been daytime fish. Also, there's been a lot of big, great kite fishing going on with big fish up over 200 pounds on a regular basis. And there's also been some daytime fish in addition to that. So really good stuff. Some recent scores, high liner with limits of yellowfin tuna. That fish is closer to the beach off La Jolla, off Carlsbad, sometimes across the border. There's still that flow of Dorado and yellowfin tuna moving up here as evidence by the Highliner voids or limits of bluefin tuna. A recent trip on board the Pride SoCal Sport Fishing Club was out there. Rosie O'Brien with a beautiful fish. They had great fishing on board that one. The Navagante out of Redondo limits of bluefin tuna. Thunderbird 20 bluefin tuna. Dana Wharf fishing locally yesterday. Their local boats had a shot of yellowfin tuna. Man, I'm telling you, we are sitting on a powder cake and it blew up about four or five days ago, and we started on this incredible nighttime fishing where it has been beyond believable. It's pinch me, I'm dreaming kind of fishing. The Freedom with over 100 bluefin tuna out of 22nd Street landing on the trip. The Royal Star, many of the long range boys who are fishing up in that region have been just smashing it. It has been straight phenomenal and fantastic. Across the border down to Ensenada, 70 miles, in case you're not really familiar with the geography from the Mexican-American border. And down there in that neck of the woods, there's still some offshore action. They've got breezy weather down there also. 
but there's Dorado and Yellowfin and Bluefin tuna down there. It's really spotty. And again, we have this chocolatey kind of red tide, which looks a little cleaner here this morning, but it's still here. Uh, we even have that offshore, so you gotta kind of find the clean water. Even in that off-color water, you'll catch some fish from time to time. So we have to keep our eyes on Ensenada and the inshore bite's still pretty darn good. Calico bass, sand bass, we're catching a few white sea bass down there and also an occasional yellowtail south of the border. All right, so really excellent fishing. There's no doubt about it, but we have a little problem right now and that wind is up today, really, really up. Now, it won't affect the local areas that much. It's still breezing here, but out there near Clemente, Tanner, Cortez, nasty weather here today, subsiding tomorrow and fishable for sure uh, through the weekend and getting really lovelier next week. So that sounds really good to me. Taking a look at our islands. Nobody's taking a look at our islands for the most part. Down there at the Coronado Islands off of uh, Tijuana basically, but San Diego boats that have looked at it. A few yellows there, some calico bass, too much going on offshore to hit it. Same thing with San Clemente Island. Nobody's fishing it. There's been yellows and calico bass there. Up in the Channel Islands, pretty breezy here today, but they've been catching some rockfish, whitefish, occasional bluefin tuna up there in that neck of the woods. Occasional hit on the white sea bass and halibut. What a year it's been on that up there in that neck of the woods, but pretty breezy conditions up there here this morning so far. We'll continue to watch that for you very closely. Coastal by New Seaforth. Two yellows in the 20 to 30 pound class on the half day boat out of San Diego. They occasionally get a ripper on the forkies down there. The yellows are circulating in there within range of those boys, so hang on on that. And I don't think it's going to be a whole heck of a lot longer where you're going to see half day Dorado and even yellowfin tuna. If that push that Brad is talking about continues to happen, that fish continues to migrate up the Baja Peninsula into SoCal waters, and it is going to get really crazy when that happens. Oceanside, Dana Wharf, those guys are getting shots at some yellowfin right outside of them. And there's also a little bit of bluefin mixed up with it. And the marlin bite in SoCal has been pretty darn good. And it's only going to get better here. This fall is going to be a remarkable marlin season, the way this is panning out. There's also calico bass and rockfish for all those guys. Same thing up here in the LA Orange County area, Long Beach, San Pedro, it's Marina del Rey, Redondo. Good rock fishing for most of the guys. If they can't get a bite on the surface action, and the bass bite's been pretty poor up here recently. Uh, they can get rockfish or sculpin, fill the sacks with some of the finest eating fish in the sea. I don't know what you could ask for that's better than that. I mean, it's almost like you can't miss. You may not get that bluefin, you may not get that yellowfin, you may not catch a dorado right now, you may not even catch a bunch of bass, but you're gonna catch some rockfish as long as your weather's decent, and that is always good news. Up there on the island spirit, our friend Cody Rogers, Ventura. Harbor Sport Fishing, 805-676-3474. Cody, hope you're doing great. Limits a white fish yesterday. Another guy that tries hard to get that surface action going for you every single day. Trying to find some calico bass, sand bass, barracuda, white sea bass, halibut. If not, fall back, rockfish, whitefish, that kind of a thing. Can't beat that enterprise up here yesterday out of Pier Point Landing in Long Beach with limits on the rockfish or a good hit on the rockfish indeed. So nothing wrong with those kind of scores. I do want to take you back to San Diego for one moment, talk about those full day trips. They are still scratching at the bluefin, the yellowfin, better than scratching. I mean, it's just that we compare it to this wide open fishing and then we're like, oh man, it's not that good. And I'm guilty of it. Here I am, I'm catching myself right in the middle of it. Still some darn good fishing. San Diego yesterday, 24 yellowfin tuna, 23 bluefin tuna, to Dorado in any other year, we'd be doing somersaults over that catch. Sea Watch, 26 guys, 28 bluefin and a Dorado. Those kind of scores are pretty darn common right now for boats that leave out of San Diego in the morning and come back in the evening. So keep that in mind. There's some awfully good fishing going on for those guys. And I mentioned the heavy tackle, and I'm definitely really adamant about that. However, some light stuff is also necessary because on many of these full day trips or even overnight trips or even multi-day trips, when you get into that daytime bite and it's smaller great fish, it is finicky. And you gotta drop down to sometimes even 20 pound fluorocarbon. W, 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 Opsin, 
USA.com. 25 pound and smaller hooks like a number one or number two, circle hook. Those techniques, those strategies have been working really well. If you're not getting a bite, many times it's because you're fishing too heavy, your bait doesn't look natural, you're not choosing a hot bait, so keep that in mind. Talk to your crew members. If they're telling you, hey man, you're playing with fire here dropping down to 20, I'm telling you, we're seeing a lot of big fish boil around here. Talk to those boys. They know exactly what they are talking about and they can help you through it. So keep that in mind. On the surf, we continue to see some Corvina. You gotta find some water that's not so dirty, but even in the red tide, I've seen a couple of guys remarkably pull a couple of fish out of there. But for the most part, if you find red tide, it's going to be really slow, like no fish in that water, not enough oxygen in there for those little devils to breathe. So if you find some clean water, Corvina fishing, yellowfin croaker fishing, spot fin croaker fishing, it's all going to get better once this all cleans up. And your sport fishing, surf fishing headquarters, big fish bait and tackle on the corner of Seal Beach Boulevard and Pacific Coast Highway waiting for you today. Walk in there and make sure you say hi from Friedman Adventures. All right, my friends, don't forget, we do have this wind up and it is a problem out there today. We'll see if the boys can get anything at all accomplished. That wind comes down and then we're looking at a breezy weekend way out there, really nice weather in closer to the beach and a good shot at more of those bluefin tuna. Definitely fishable, gets even nicer next week. The blip on the radar is today, and then after that, we start to moderate and come down. So that is really, really good news. Hey, uh, on September 16th, we're raffling off a pen fathom reel. All of those funds go to send more help to Mexico. If you'd like to get in on the raffle, just send me a text, and I will take good care of you. I'll send you the information. We can do everything uh, by text and you don't have to be present. So that's this Saturday we're drawing and one of you are going to have that reel. More importantly, you're going to help us reach across the border and help our brothers and sisters down there. 657-227-6459. IndependentSwordFishing.com. October the 20th. Don't miss it. El Patron. Day and a half trips this weekend. Don't miss it. 310-832-8304. Going to be great. Lobster Seminar Live Wednesday night right here on the Friedman Adventures YouTube channel. And don't miss my new channel. If you feel like trying to get healthy, trying to get out and walk, trying to improve yourself physically and mentally, walk with Phil on YouTube. I would love it if you went over there and hit that subscribe button right now. Really, really appreciate all your support. All right, my friends. God. It is so beautiful. It really, really is. And hopefully that weather comes down and we're out catching fish again tonight. I'll keep you in touch with all the very latest today. And as always, I hope to see you really, really soon.